Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today has been an interesting day in the Parliament. We have already posted a video on the scandal regarding the um, infiltration of a research laboratory in Winnipeg by the People's Republic of China. Uh, we believe that there was a whole bunch of classified materials stolen and that two of the scientists committed espionage. I've not yet been arrested, no charges. So this is just a belief by the Conservative Party and uh, quite frankly, myself. So uh, it's not been confirmed. So uh, we're going to go to question period and see what everybody has to say on this. Oral questions, questions oral. The Honourable Member from Wellington, Halton Hill. Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker, not only did the government neglect national security, not only did they cover up things, they continue to skirt responsibility. Yesterday, the Minister of Health said, no, high officials involved in the um, microbiology lab will be held responsible. If there's no one responsible, who within the cabinet will know who is responsible? The Honorable Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. At the beginning, it's important to say that health agencies are independent, particularly in terms of national security. And it's our government that created a process to make sure that all the information is available. And it's really important for two Canadian citizens who were very well known as scientists, did bad things like this. And there is an investigation underway with the RCMP. And this is very important, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Wellington, Halton Hill. So he didn't directly answer the question. He did say the RCMP were investigating. However, uh, the the question was, yesterday you said nobody would be held responsible. And then he goes into talking about how health agency in Canada is independent. And he specifically mentions in the area of national security. How can they be independent in the area of national security? That absolutely does not make any sense. And as we've known from past history with the Canadian government, with uh, the Liberal government, there they will claim that an agency is independent or an agency is in control of whatever, and then they'll take control of that agency and interfere with what's going on. So clearly this is not an answer to the question and I really hate it when they don't answer the question. And it, it, it's also, well, we'll just carry on. Mr. Speaker, the Canada-China Committee in 2019 could have done exactly the same job as the ad hoc committee did, and we could have had the documents three years ago. The CSIS assessments released yesterday make it clear the PRC is and was actively recruiting top Canadian scientists to plunder Canada's research and intellectual property. The assessments also make clear that the PRC wants to weaponize the civilian research for military purposes against us and our allies. Knowing what we know now, will the government halt all collaboration between between the Winnipeg National Microbiology Laboratory and any entities and individuals in the People's Republic of China. Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Health. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I want to say that an attack on our national security by foreign nations, be it China or Russia, represents an attack on democracy and represents a direct attack on every member of this House. And that I share his outrage that China or any country would attempt to interfere in our process. The Public Health Agency, which is one of the most respected agencies in the world, hired two Canadian citizens who are eminent, eminent uh, uh, and well-known scientists in Canada who lied. It is the Public Health Agency that discovered that. It is the Public Health Agency that fired them. And that's why there's now an RCMP investigation about their actions. The Honourable Member from Wellington... So he doesn't answer the question again. The question was, will he stop all collaboration with the People's Republic of China? He doesn't answer that. He uh, goes back and repeats himself on the fact that these were 
Canadian citizens who were fired. They were eminent scientists, and they lied. So he doesn't answer the question. Will Canada cease collaboration with the People's Republic of China? Alton Hill. The documents, Mr. Speaker, reveal a shocking disregard for Canada's national security. They re reveal a government that is completely asleep at the switch on national security and the machinery of government. They reveal government employees collaborating with Beijing's government and with the biological weapons unit of the People's Liberation Army. Oh. Equally shocking are the health minister's comments. He said yesterday, there, is, there was no evidence of actual breaches at the lab and no sensitive information actually left the country. The documents say otherwise. Does the minister stand by those comments? Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, the two Canadian scientists in question were well known for their work in virology uh, and had spent uh, their time working on uh, uh, health treatments for those that were suffering from viruses. Uh, they are collaboration. There is absolutely no evidence of the thing that the member opposite is suggesting. And I do not think that it is, it is at all appropriate to suggest that they were involved with weaponization or things of this nature. When we're, they have all the documents, they can see all the information. They've been, we have waived all the normal considerations not only of national security, Mr. Speaker, but of uh, employee relationships that normally are kept confidential. It was our government that did that. That's why they have this information. The Honourable Member from Cumberland. So he, again, doesn't answer the question. It's really frustrating listening to uh, these people in Parliament when they're asked a direct question and they don't answer it. The uh, report, according to the, mini according to the uh, member opposite of the Minister of Health, says that sensitive information was transferred to the People's Republic of, of China. And the Minister of Health says that, no, there wasn't. Read the report. But the report says that there was. Chester. Speaker, scientists working with Ebola at Canada's only level four lab collaborated with the People's Republic of China Army Major General. Sadly, the story does not end there. Dr. Chu was able to gain access to the lab for students from China, and it gets worse, a scientist from the Academy of Military Medical Sciences, the research arm of the PLA, known to work on biology-enabled warfare. How do so many citizens from a hostile superpower gain access to Canada's top lab? Is it because the Prime Minister admires China's basic dictatorship? The Honourable Minister. This is a really good question. We've known for decades that the, well, maybe not for decades, but we've known ever since uh, Trudeau gained power that he was allowing access by the Canadian, by the Chinese military into Canadian facilities. We were training Chinese fighter pilots in, uh, in a facility in, uh, on the prairies. So uh, this is just ridiculous that we would allow scientists from a hostile country, a country that is known to weaponize, you know, biological weapons and evil government over there, and our co government is cooperating with them. Some will attempt to national security concerns to play partisan games. I think that's unfortunate. And let me just give an example. With respect to Ebola, the exchange of Ebola in 2019 was done in the context of trying to work with China and other countries on finding solutions to Ebola, which exists in so many different parts of the country. At that moment in time in 2019, the relationship with China was in a different place. The information that was shared was through legitimate channels. It has nothing to do with this issue. It was absolutely known and handled with complete control. I think it's very very important to not mischaracterize national security for partisan interest. So he's saying that they uh, shared the Ebola research with China knowingly, uh, knowing that this country weaponizes diseases. You know, just because your 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 intent to have it used for. Uh, research purposes to develop uh, solutions to uh, you know uh, issues of health issues and, and whatnot. Your intent to do that doesn't mean that 
your enemy's intent is the same. And yes, China is an enemy of the West. The Honorable Member from Cumberland Colchester. Speaker, that minister's comments are reckless and untrue. Before March 31st, 2019, the PRC did not have a containment level 4 lab. How can I be so specific about the date? This is the date on which a scientist at Canada's top lab, the National Microbiology Lab, shipped dangerous pathogens, including Ebola virus, to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This scientist had a history of visiting and collaborating with the PLA since 2016. When did the Minister of Health and the Prime Minister know about the espionage and blatant violation of our sovereignty? And when did they decide to cover it up? Here. It's uh, interesting that he brought up 2016. Of course, the Trudeau government was in power during uh, 2016. And he called it like it was. It's espionage. A lot of our research, our health research, went to a country that is known to use health research and for military purposes, like weaponize it. The Honorable Minister of Health. The exact opposite of a cover-up occurred. It's actually this government that created the process that released these documents. So they were, they actually refused to participate in this process. The second thing that I will say, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, with respect to our national security interests, that it is essential when we're dealing with national security to recognize two things. That the party opposite is saying that they would support a partisan interference in the Public Health Agency of Canada, that if they were in government, they would see it as acceptable for political interference into that process. No, it's out of an arm's length, and rightfully it is at an arm's length. They are the ones that identified these Canadian citizens, these eminent scientists, were lying, and they took action. There you go. The Honourable Member from Selkirk Interlake Eastman. This Prime Minister isn't worth the cost, the crime, the corruption, or the cover-ups. After hiding the Winnipeg lab documents from Canadians for over three years, we finally know why the Liberals blocked Parliament. We know that Dr. Chu had close and clandestine relationships with entities of the People's Republic of China and collaborated with military scientists. The People's Liberation Army is a known security threat to Canada. That's right. So why did the co Prime Minister cover up this breach of national security instead of arresting these spies? Good question. The Honourable... It's a good question. Uh, they, I mean, it's been four years and these uh, spies have not yet been arrested. So the Minister of Health is saying, well, the RCMP is investigating it, but they've had four years. Four years to investigate. Minister of Health. Well, I'll answer the first part of the question, as I suspect they're going to have other questions on the second element. On the first order, it was uh, the first offer was to have all parliamentarians uh, look at the documents through NSI COP. That was an immediate offer. Some opposition members said that that wasn't a full, that wasn't a good answer because they wanted to make sure that if there was a need for redactions to be released, they wanted a process. So I, as House Leader at that point in time, suggested an ad hoc process that would ensure that an independent arbiter would make the decision about releasing those documents. I would remind the member again that it is an independent decision of the public health agency to make redactions. I'm sure he's not suggesting that anything else other than that should happen. The Honourable Member from Selkirk Interlake That Eastman. House Leader actually sued the Speaker. Mr. Dr. Chu maliciously shared technology and materials from the Winnipeg Labs with Major General Chen, one of Beijing's top commanders at the Academy of Military Medical Science. The Academy is described in the CSIS documents as the highest medical research institution of the People's Liberation Army of the PRC and has offensive biological weapons capabilities. And one of his objectives is to transform the results of basic civilian research into military applications and biotechnology. The Chinese built military can now make more biological weapons and potentially use them against Canadians wow. and our allies. Wow. Why did the Prime Minister cover up this national security threat? The Honourable Minister of Health. I've already said that the documents uh, first were released and then and then the additional redactions were actually commenced by us. The second point is uh, when the member says maliciously, uh, we don't know what their intention was. That's the purpose of an RCMP investigation. Secondly, these were these are individuals uh, that that I am deeply concerned about, like the member opposite. And in a process of due process, we understand what they did with respect to the Chinese government. The military and the government and the academia and scientists are all part of their military. That means that any connection that they had whatsoever uh, would have touched that. And so I think it's careful. And that's a good point. He's making uh, the point for the Conservatives that there should never have been any collaboration 
between our government and the Chinese government because they're all part of the military. They're all part of the government. The Honorable Member from uh, uh, Selkirk Interlake East. The Health Minister should actually read the CSIS documents that actually describes all the breaches that were done and the espionage that was carried out. At the Prime Minister's top public health lab in Canada, Beijing military scientist Dr. Yan was given unfettered access to all the labs and the computer systems at the Winnipeg labs, which were covertly shared by Dr. Chu with Beijing. Instead of stopping this espionage, the Prime Minister decided to cover it up. Why did the Prime Minister put his admiration for the basic dictatorship of the Communist Party in Beijing ahead of the public safety of Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, I think it's important to step back and really consider what the Conservative uh, Party is saying here. Uh, that the at the end, at the time in which they were hired, the, these two Canadian citizens were eminent scientists uh, who were well published and well regarded throughout North America. Uh, the fact that they lied and misrepresented themselves, Mr. Speaker, is reprehensible. So I would hope what they're not suggesting is that if they were in power, that they would have uh, interfered politically, told, been able through clairvoyance to know that these eminent scientists who at this point in time had no reason to believe that they were anything other than Canadian scientists who were doing good research, that they would have interfered politically with clairvoyance and got rid of them before this happened. He's talking about something that happened four years ago and that was known for four years. And the scientists uh, have been under, uh, presumably under investigation for four years. Unless uh, the RCMP has just started an investigation, well, that... If that's the case, then it's even worse than, uh, than just having uh, the document released. Now, if, they've, if they're just starting the investigation, you could understand how that would, uh, how that it would be that, it would, um, that they're, they're not very far along. But for four years? So that's pretty much it. Uh, there is some more discussion on this topic in Parliament today in question period, but it gets pretty repetitive. There's nothing more that we can learn from uh, this continued debate. So I'm going to end it here. When I have more information, I'll let you know. I think this does show how corrupt the Trudeau government is, how they really don't care about national security. And I really hope it forces uh, an early election because we really can't manage another year and a half or more of this idiot in, uh, pub in charge of our country. So I'll uh, keep you apprised of any further updates. Hey everybody, I hope you liked that video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button. Also share with your friends if you liked it and we'll see you on the next video.